Can we please have our student challenge sharers to the announcer's desk? Student challenge sharers. All six of you, student challenge sharers to the announcer's desk. Thank you. Michael Buick from Pongaroo. It's a little place just out of uh, Pahiatua, heading towards the coast. It's one place where I've driven down the road and the dirt is going faster than you are when you're doing 120 k's. It's a little bit breezy. We've got Heaven Kemp there on table number two. Tracy Baxter on table three and George Oliver, table number four. Can we have a Smedley Sharers to the announcer's desk? And uh, congratulations, our junior semi-finalists, Heat 1, Jeremy Goodyear, Stuart Robson, Gabriel Winders, Liam Pritchard, Keith Swan, and Matt Smith. Heat 2, Jonah Kirena, Will Rogers, Jonathan Painter, Artify Hadfield, Mark Baxter, Brooke Hamilton. Heat 3, Braden Clifford, Daniel Biggs, Lion Harries, Jake Ellison, Ruben Alabaster and Henry Mayo. Okay, sharers to the board, we have the green light. This is for the Hawaii Mullins Novice Hall Handling semi final. Timekeepers ready, sharers get set, go. So, this is heat number two. These, uh, these young wall handlers, they've had the luxury of watching these, the first heat go. They would have been watching that Chelsea. And they know that they're really going to have to pick their game up because of the time that she set. But looking at the top of the points, and, and the points are just the points on the board. The, the fleeces go out the back to what we call the dungeon. And out there, there's more judging wool handlers, and they'll be ripping the fleeces and their oddments to pieces just to make sure that everything is in the right basket. So what was up on top is not necessarily how it will be at the end. But here we go, Shearer's into the undermine, stepping up the neck. This young Michael Buick, he uh, looks like he's got everything under control there. Just sweeps around the back of his Shearer. Keeps everything all nice and tidy. You see some of these wool handlers, they just give a big sweep and wool goes flying everywhere. But he's got a, a nice little tidy pile. Heaven on table number two, she's already got a lot of her lock wool and second pieces in baskets already. So her floor, there's nothing on the floor there. It shows me that's a good organization, Mavis. Yes, thanks, Tuma. The, I guess the thing is, what we have here, these are our kohanga reo wool handlers. These are pretty much brand new. They've been in the shed maybe a season, a season and a half. You'd expect that they, if there's any more than that, that they'd be up in a higher grade. So there's a lot of learning from these young wool handlers. They're still trying to figure out exactly how the scoring system works, but let's have a look at these throws. First to turn, Georgia. Big bulky fleece. Tracy, not a bad throw, but a bunching on the end. Same with Heaven, just a little bit of bunching, but then that looked like a pretty difficult fleece. Probably the best fleece throw here today at this heat would have been from young Michael Buick. Yeah, Doing young well, Michael, Michael. He, he did have a good throw, Mavis, a little bit hanging over, maybe one point. But, uh, you know, he's, he's got his eye on the job. Very, very, uh, a lot of concentration there. And that's what you want to see. But look at this girl on table number three. She's uh, doing the Chelsea styles, isn't she? Yep, she sure is. She's not mucking around. And look at the way that uh, these wool handlers have prepared themselves for this last. Three of them have cleaned up the top first. Yeah. Tracy's going back for it now. That all takes a bit of time, but she's, she's pretty relaxed about how she wants to do that. All right, I'll just butt in there for a wee second. Okay, we'll get this well first done, Tracy. Done. Bit Thank of wool you. left on the table, but nothing too bad. Good to go. Thanks, Mavis. OK, we'll just get this heat started and go back to the board. So we've got on press number one, this is the second heat of the woman's single press, Kushla Abraham. And her sister, 
on press two, Samantha Gordon. Radio timekeepers are ready, uh, judges ready, presses on your master set, go. Back to the board. So we've almost tidied ourselves up here in this last heat of the semis. Heaven's just put her hand up, waiting on Michael. He's not too far away. Sometimes not being the fastest isn't the bad thing. It gives you a chance to get that quality A-OK, -okay, and that looks like what Michael's doing. But time does take a fair chunk of the penalties if you're not, if you're not really onto it. Well done, Michael. Thank you, competitors. All right, down here on the pressing, we've got uh, Kushla, as I said. She has um, got her name on the, uh, the board behind us and the teams. She'll be very desperate to try and take out the singles as the pins go in. I'll just sneak in and call our heat one of senior wool handling to the stage, please. Table four. Oh, no, so we're going to do presentation. Carry on, Gerald. There's yeah, Samantha, her youngest sister, and, of course, the 17-year-old boy, Adam, has already taken part and still at school. So heavily involved, this family in the shearing and wool handling industry, and in this case, pressing. Here we go, Samantha. Oh, yeah, that's it. Get that leg under there and roll it up over your knee. She goes in for another one. Stay with her, folks. Oh, there's a lot of work to do. Remember the very first heat here. Pania took one half hour. So that's a, a long time, so you've got to pace yourself. The target for you, ladies, is 150 kgs. Kushla. Getting the cap organised nice and tidy, knowing that there's points around presentation and technique, and you've got to make sure that those little We'll just bars. do a presentation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the uh, first of our prize givings, and this is for the Student Sharing Challenge. Uh, before we get started, uh, just would like to uh, mention these two gentlemen on my left. We have Ian Stewart. He's been a member for 56 years, life member for the Golden Shares of 56 years, and Greg Herrick as well. They're both uh, life members of the Golden Shares, so I think that's well worth a mention. Give them a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, in first place, 120 dollars. The winners are Waipolda, Kirsty Rowe, Jacob Maxwell. Okay, looks like Jacob has taken the team captaincy and is going to say a few words. Jacob. Oh, oh um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, was, yeah, oh, thank you to the Golden Shears for putting this event on and especially to the life members. It was pretty mean. Um, yeah, yeah oh, I'm lucky to you other fellas. It's pretty mean. Uh, yeah. Right, so it is. Thank you. Hold on, mate. <laughs> just, just stay down there. Just go and stand down there. Okay, in second place we have Taratahi. Yeah. 
And in third place, we have Smedley. This is the first time that we've done this event, and I think it's a wonderful event to uh, just see the young trainees of all these, uh, these trainee, uh, you know, ventures coming up here and giving it a go. I think a couple of them are in, a, in some events later on, like in the uh, novice shearing semi-final, and I think in the intermediate shearing semi-final. So well done to all these uh, training institutes that get out there and train all our young guys. And back to you, Gerald. Thanks, Morgan. That's the idea, ladies and gentlemen. Give them a round of applause. They leave the stage, please. Not an easy place to be. Doesn't matter how experienced you are. So um, congratulations to all them. Back to the action here now. What's been going on? Well, we're still pressing this bail. Running time at the moment. How are we going, girls? So Six minutes, 19. Heat one Push. of our senior wool handling. Table one, Emily Tikapa. Jeremy Goodyear on two. Jimmy Superfly on three. And Angela Stevens on four. Cheers, Gerald. Good work. So Kushler says, right. Got three quarters of the uh, wool in the bin. We're targeting the 150. Not going for the super duper handfuls, just the top up right now. Feels we're getting close to the uh, target weight. Realising the audience that there's a lot of points tied up in underweight, especially, and um, not so much, but overweight as well. So the key is to try to guess what 160 k or 150 kgs of wool would feel like. And that's the art of doing this day in and day out. One of the big parts of the day-to-day -day running of a shearing shed is pressing the wall. Here we go, Samantha goes for a big deep breath. Real family affair here today at the Goldies. Oh, she flicks that up there. She's going to have to clamber up there and get that. Um, if I could button Gerald. Corners. Yes. Okay, looks like we're ready to go. We've got the green light. Can we have our shearers to the board, please? Te Puni Kokiri, uh, the uh, sponsor of the senior... Wool handling. These wool handlers will handle three long wool fleeces. The seal time is one minute 20, so the time is coming down again. You wool handlers, the next heat up, you guys need to be organised. As soon as the judges judge the board, we'd like you to get up with your mate. Your mate, clean the board down, so all you need to do is worry about your baskets. Looks like we're good to go. All our judges are here. Timekeepers ready. Shearers, get set, go. Well, we've got a pretty cool line up here for the first of our senior wool handling heats. Thank you to Puni Korkiri. What a great sponsor they've been. They've been with Golden Shears for a number of years now, and they acknowledge the role that shearing plays or wool harvesting for a lot of Māori whānau all over New Zealand. So, kia ora to Puni Kōkiri. Okay, we got uh, Emily Takapa, the Māori girl with the blue hair from Scotland on table number one. On table number two, we have Jeremy Goodger, a bit of a, a local legend. Table number three, we have Jimmy Samuels from Martin. He's another legend that's uh, been hanging around a little while too. And on table number four, we have Angela Stevens from Napier. So these wool handlers, they're a little bit more experienced. Well, a lot more experienced. I suppose the senior wool handlers have probably been wool handling in excess of four years, Mavis. All of that. And as a result, you'll also notice that these shearers will be taking a bit of a step up as well. They've been doing a great job in the, interme um, the novice and the juniors, just holding back. But now we're into the bread and butter, and this is where the real action happens. So you can expect to see these shearers 
stepping it up for these wool handlers. Let's test them. First on the board, on the table, let's have a look. Emily turns, Jeremy turns, yes. Come on, Ems, come on. Nice one. Come on, Ems. Oh, Ange has got a fleece that looks like it come out of the ram paddock. It's a big one. Probably bigger than her. I think she needed two tables for that fleece. Yeah, Aroha Mai. That was, uh, like we said, that was a big fleece, and they don't make tables big enough for some of these fleeces. But she's done the best she can with it. It's all still there. She knows exactly where the oddments are that she needs to get off. But I think the best, the better throws pretty much came from um, the middle of the field here today, from Jeremy and, and Jimmy. What do you guys think you're up to? Yeah, well, they'll get under stress shortly, and that'll all go out the gate. That's how it rolls. And then these young girls will sort of come into their own. But here we go, these wool handlers, they're hanging around the shear at the moment, collecting the cheek wool. They need to frib the belly, chuck it in the belly in the frib, and then run back to their fleece. There's not a lot of time. These shearers are going to put these wool handlers under great pressure. But this is how it is in the wool sheds, ladies and gentlemen, when you've got four shearers all shearing 100 a run each. You know, these wool handlers, they don't have a lot of time to scratch their you know whaties. They need to get in. Less hooey, more dewy. And here we go. Wool shearers coming down the last side. All these wool handlers. Jeremy's the only one with the fleece off, Mavis. Yep. Did you see Angela just grab that bit, those bits of uh, wool off the top of her table? Because our Australian judge there will be looking at that table and thinking, yep, that's a, there's a bit of something there for me to find a penalty on. Second fleeces. Bit, they're a bit loose. They're a bit spread out, maybe. Oh, look at oh, Master Goodger. He's been around a while. He knows how this rolls. Lovely fleece from Emily. Up in Scotland, they don't kind of, uh, they don't prepare the wool like we do here. So she comes down to New Zealand, susses out the New Zealand style, if you like, and then here she is in this heat. Yeah, that's right. There's a, a lot of different ways of processing wool. New Zealand's different to Australia. Australia's different to the UK. And uh, she's one of these young ladies that gets around to all these countries competing. She's a real show pony, loves it. I think she'll be in Germany in a little while and Norway as well. But at the moment, we're at Golden Shears and mastered in the biggest show on the planet. And Jeremy Goodger, he had a heck of a good throw. This is the final fleece coming off, ladies and gentlemen. Once the shearer pulls the cord at the end of this sheep, these wool handlers have one minute and 20 seconds. So there's a lot of pressure coming on these young wool handlers. Jeremy Goodger, he runs back to his shearer, clicks the cheek wool. If that cheek wool touches the main fleece wool, that's classed as contamination, Mavis. That's right. So it's about, really is about having eyes in the back of your head as you're preparing that wool on the table. You have to kind of know where that shearer is, where he's at, so that you can be there when those, uh, those fleeces or those eye clips drop. Here we go, the last row. Nice one, Angela. Bit of bunching, a little bit turned over, not bad. Pretty cool, Jimmy. The superfly Jimmy Samuels, he lands a beauty. A little bit of bunching up the top, but nothing too bad. We got Jeremy Goodger, he had too much wheat bix this morning, threw half the neck off the table. And we got Emily down here, she's just setting up that fleece, she's gonna need it to land perfectly so that she's got all the faults at the edge of the table. That's pretty good too. So here we go, one minute and 20 seconds. It's probably been close to 30 seconds right now. So these wool handlers, geez, this time, is it, is it long enough, Mavis? It's long enough. These, these wool handlers are not learners. These are our experienced wool handlers in the shed. They're used to working with shearers who are, you know, they're um, working to their own pace. So they need to keep up. Angela's doing a great job of just bringing that fleece over. Jimmy's already put his away. And like I say, the boys in the middle, they're on to it. I think uh, Jeremy was in the final yesterday at the pre shares so he's had a bit of a warm-up. I guess the other thing to note, there's not a lot of room up there. But again, that just reflects when you're out in the field, you go to some wool sheds and gee, you've hardly got room to, to swing your broom. And so the wool handlers just have to make the best of it. Look at these guys, they're just cool, calm, collected, getting around that table. Emily picks up her broom, but we've got Jeremy down there. He's nearly ready to put his hand up. 
Jimmy Samuels, he's right there as well. Has a look around. Yes. You've got to have a look around before you put your hand up. Wall handlers, Jimmy Samuels. Too much, Jeremy. That was a great display. Nice, Angela. So we're right, probably then. hitting the two-minute mark now. Gerald. Yeah, cheers, Tuma. Yeah, well, we're hitting down here. We're on the 15-minute uh, mark now. So these two sisters have been going hammer and tongs down the back of the um, hall here as well as the front. So Kushler lying out. Got to get that wall through, that pin through there. The wall's in the way. She says, oh, jolly. That's no not idea. part of the plan. Yeah. Samantha says, this is how it's done. You've got to have it nice and tidy, sister, before you pull that cap down. So Hi there, viewers. Welcome back to the uh, afternoon session here at the Golden Cheers for the year 2018. And uh, we've just had uh, a wonderful final uh, sponsored by life members of the Golden Cheers. And uh, we had uh, Ian Stewart and uh, we had another very good life member up there as well. We are going to uh, cut now to the interview room and we are interviewing our first uh, prize winners and uh, this was one that was sponsored by those guys up there and uh, we have uh, Jacob Maxwell on our extreme right and Christy Rohr on our ex extreme left so how do you guys feel? Don't oh. be shy. <laughs> bit surprised really. <laughs> pretty stoked. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a pretty cool experience. First time in competition for both of us so yeah it was a pretty cool experience really. Well, we had up there Mr. Greg Herrick, and he's uh, been a past president, and he's a watchful eye, and I had a word with him, and he said it was fantastic. But you guys uh, are students at Waipaua, and uh, that's up in the big east coast there, and a big farming country. Uh, how many dogs you got? Um, oh, only one. Are you one. allowed dogs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I got two. Jacob's had a bit of unlucky trouble with his dog, so he's only got 100 uh -huh. at the moment, but um, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, this is only can spell good things for uh, the Waipoa <laughs> training farm. Yeah. And um, second season as a, as a shepherd there, yep. and you've got ambitions of uh, owning a farm or yeah, definitely. looking yep. at buying a farm at some stage? Yep. Uh, seen goal. And uh, it's not easy to do, but uh, yep. we have a lot of people that have brought their farms out of shearing, and uh, you need the skills now because most uh, farms are looking for people with uh, not only uh, practical skills, but skills with paperwork as well so that all comes through at Waipawa you get yep. you get all those things through here yeah they teach us a lot of things here <laughs> oh good <laughs> and uh you've had some good teachers with your shearing yep yeah we had um Bill Hales came back um this year and as well as last year and he taught us and he brought um this year he brought Dion King with him and Elsa Fleming so all right had the best of the best really so yeah. you have <coughs> had some good tutorage and, um, and on behalf of the Golden Cheers, we congratulate you too. You're walk walking away with red ribbons. Thank you. I know there's somebody from the newspapers and uh, they would like to talk to you as well. So congratulations, Christy. Thank you very much. And Jacob, and uh, well done. And we'll see you again at the next competition. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Thank Cheers. you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Toby. Yes. The last of the clips goes in for Kushler. Your okay. sister's getting away, Samantha. Go, 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 go. Okay, Gerald, we're, uh, we've got the green light. Can we have our shearers to the board? We time it right, Toby? Yep, for the next one. Yeah, thank you. And our judges would be nice. That we well for the boys? Yeah. I did say nice judges. Timekeepers ready. Shearers, get set, go. Okay, Gerald, back to you. They're clipping up down there. Here we are. The uh, pins are coming out now for Kushner. Nice square bale. See that up and around there? She's got another smile on her face now. She was shaking her head before thinking, how did that little bit of loose wool get in my way when I wanted to get those pins through nice and quick? But, yes, she's um, forgotten about that, wrote the note, screwed it up, chucked it in the bin, moved on. Now it's the tidy up time in and around the corner of that bale. She's happy there. It's going to be bale on the floor in a wee second or two. How are we going? 19 minutes. We're 10 minutes ahead of the last heat before lunch. What did you sisters have for lunch? You've shot across the road for, well, what? 
good shot of coffee anyway. The finishing touch is getting done for Kushler here. The tidy up jobs now. It won't be long for the hand in the air. Samantha, keep it going, keep, keep going. She is focused now. The pupils of her eyes are starting to get really big. She's starting to get really fired up. Kushler's got a beautiful pattern. There we go, give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. She's been hard at it. 20 minutes, that's a good time. That's not easy doing one of these bales. Samantha, let's stay with it till Samantha gets tidied up. She's got a nice clean bale too. Her work area is already clean. Pins are out of the way. Bang that one onto the ground, Samantha. That's it, haul it out. Get ready, folks. Two sisters having a go. One's the first timer, one's exceptionally experienced. But what an effort by both of them. When you're ready, Samantha, when you're ready, in your time, she locks it up and says, Shut the gate, ladies and gentlemen, I'm wrapped. Give her a round of applause, ladies. Well done to the Gordon sisters. Back into the front of the hall now, we've got the second heat of the Tupuni Kōkiri Senior Wool Handling Heats. And this is another pretty fantastic heat. Right down the end on stand number one, we have Ricky Stevens. Be interesting to be a fly on the wall with him and Ange as they're discussing tactics for the, the heats and the finals. They've been consistently in those top places right through the season. So very cool. For you, Ricky. Bianca Harwe, local girl. She's been in the on the podium quite a bit as we've travelled around the AMP shows. She's been in the wool handling, competitive wool handling scene for a little while, come up through the grades, and I'd expect it won't be too long before she hits the open grade and starts challenging them as well. Nicole Pituha, Ngati Kere, Porongaho. They make the best shearers and wool handlers out there. Awesome, Nicole. She's been around quite a, quite a while, this main shear as well. And down here on the end, we have Crystal Gulliver from Gore. Putting that fleece away. Oh, she's going to have to go. These shearers are instructed to come out. More fleeces on the table, and as you can see up that top end, from where I am, not too bad, Ricky. A little bit of overhang and a bit of bunching. Actually, it's the same for all of them. Down the end here, Crystal didn't do too badly. These are hard fleeces, ladies and gentlemen. They're well grown, well grown. Fantastic job, Cross Hills, Cross Keys. But what it does mean is that there's none of those short binding bits in the fleeces to hold these fleeces together. So they are loose, they are well grown, and they're a challenge. Do the, do the fleeces, do you think, with a bit of warmth in them, make them sort of not so easy to stay together? Does the heat have anything to do with that, Mavis? I would have thought the warmth and, you know, that we've got does open the, the follicles to allow these, um, these fleeces to be well shorn at least. Okay, so just out here I'm watching Ricky Stevens. He's working his way around the, uh, the top. He runs back to the shearer. I think he is the current triathlon champion. So, uh, you know, he's, he knows what's going on. Him and Angela will be discussing tactics. She's probably saying, if you beat me, you're, you're feeding baby tonight. So uh, that's probably something that she'll hold over him. But here we go. These guys, they look a little bit more... Uh, up with the play, but let's see how we go. This is the third and final fleece. Lovely looking fleece on table three. Let's see how she goes. Beautiful. Oh, these fleeces, these throws are a little bit better. I think these guys might be a little bit more relaxed. One minute and 20 seconds is the seal time. Nicole Petuha, you had the most perfect throw there. She's working her way around the top, looking for that neck wall. We've got Bianca Harwell. She's pulling out the neck wool as well. Ricky Stevens. He's got a, his fleece a little bit more loose. Looks like he's having to look for his uh, oddments a little bit more, Mavis. 
Yes, so you're right. Nicole had a lovely fleece there. It's got a few more binders, so you can see how it's just holding together. That means she should be super fast around around the skirting, and so she is. She's got that flat that fleece dispatched pretty quickly. Now it's just a matter of how organised is she in her clean-up. Oh, I think I like the looks of this Bianca Howie. She's right there. She looked like she was miles behind. Here we go, all the brooms in hand. Let's see how Nick, Ricky Stevens handles this broom. Bianca Howie looking around. Oh, Ricky Stevens, he might be the dark horse. I think he won this event in the, uh, in the juniors last year, won the junior wool handling. He wants to win back to back. We got Nicole there and Bianca. Look like they're both neck and neck. Yes. Hey, time for Bianca. Nothing between those two. Ricky he hasn't got a lot left. Time for Ricky. Heat three of our senior wool handling. Sharon Tahukarena, Lucy Grant. Well done, Crystal. On two. Vincent Goodyear on three, and Paige Adams on table four. Heat four of our senior wool handlers, please get ready. Tamaka Hema, Lashara Anderson, Christine Ballinger, and Tui Hyde. And congratulations to our novice wool handling finalists, Tracy Baxter, Georgia Oliver, Chelsea Duffy, and Heaven Kemp. I've got your singlets here, come and get them. Good afternoon, viewers on the World Wide Web. I have in the studio this afternoon Mr. Douglas Lang, Doug Lang, commonly known as Doug, and Doug is the Chief Publicity Officer for Shearing Sports in New Zealand, and he's also a very accomplished, uh, well, you're a writer of uh, many things. You dog trial, you shear sheep, and you go in and uh, do all the good stories that are out in the newspaper. So, Doug, welcome along to the studio here at the 2018 Golden Shears. Yeah, good, good afternoon. I don't know about sharing with sheep and running the dogs and the stories about them occasionally, yeah. <laughs> no, well, Doug, hey, look, it's, um, it's neat. The, uh, the, the entries are phenomenal. It's in fantastic. And, and it's, just, it's not indicative of what we've been having in the AMP shows around the country, but Golden Shears is fantastic, isn't it? Indeed. A couple of weeks ago, I think people, in fact, as recently as last week, I think they were a bit worried, but they certainly have shot up now. So we're well over... 300 competitors at, at this year's this uh, year, that's 300 individuals, quite a few of them entered in uh, a number of events, some of them were actually entered in shearing, wool handling and wool pressing. Tri triathlons. Yeah, the triathlons, so there's about 15 I think have actually entered that, that that's where they, the points they get in their heats and the various pursuits um, go together and uh, one of the best points out of those who actually enter that triathlon uh, comes out with that title, it's one of the 20 plus titles that are decided here over the next three days. Well, the, uh, the novice shearers uh, and novice wool handers, 60-odd competitors there, close to 60-odd competitors, so that spells good for the industry going forward. Exactly. As we see uh, from the, um, the challenge with uh, Waipawa and Smedley and Ta Taratahi a short while ago, um, everyone at these training institutions is being trained in shearing these days. Uh, it's about, I guess it builds up some of that teamwork and camaraderie that goes on in these institutions, so it's well reflected here, um, and, yeah, and definitely that's, that's a very big part of the, the training that's going on at the present time. Well, Waipawa came out on top, Jacob Maxwell and uh, Christy Roa, they're the champions, and uh, hey look, we're, going, we're counting down, we're heading towards Saturday night, who's going to win the Golden Shears Open Final? Well, exactly, I mean, every, everyone will say Roland Smith, um, hard, to, hard to argue against a guy who's won something like... The last 35 finals in New Zealand he's competed and he's won. His only blemish was when he uh, was eliminated in a semi-final at Tauranga back on January the 14th. You can't really go past him. It's hot challenges, of course, though. Uh, Gavin Much, David Bjork and John Kirkpatrick all been thereabouts. Some of the margins lately have been quite close to the last weekend when uh, Roland won all three competitions at Taumananui, uh, Apiti and uh, Pahiatua. Yes. But... Uh, that's more like red rag to a ball to, to Roland, I suspect. Well, Roland only won by 0.3 of a point at Pahia Tua, so that Scotsman is nipping at his heels. So uh, we look forward to that. And Doug, we'd like to spend more time in the, uh, in the interview room here and uh, we'll break down the day as, uh, as it has been and we might do that at, at the closing of the shows. So yeah. Douglas Lang, thank you very much and uh, we look forward to more talk with you. Yeah, thank on. you.
reigning champion at the moment. Really big final here last year, and she pulled that off. She's a full-time presser. That's her job. Well, I, I tell you what, Gerald, she's looking pretty trim this year. Yeah, she means business. She's smiling at that, Tuma. You know her well, obviously. She's got the fadge in. Then we've got Summer over here. Hopefully Summer can, you know, get dragged along by the pace. She's a first-timer in a pressing competition. She normally does the wool handling side, but she thought, hey, it's the Goldies. I'll have a go. And as luck would have it, she ended up with the reigning champion. OK, we've got the green light. Can we have our sharers to the board? Judges to the board. Judges to the board. OK, we just need another minute. Back to you, Gerald. How's, uh, how's our champ going? Is she, she looks like she's a bit tired already. Oh, <laughs> oh no, this will do it. She's just done a little bit of crochet there. You just knitted all that wool together, but pacing themselves. The pleasure of being in a later heat, of course, is knowing the speed that everyone else is travelling at and how many time points might be involved. <laughs> at this stage, the fastest time to do this bail is around that 20-minute mark. So it's steady as she goes, just do all the jobs right, knowing there's huge amount of points tied up on the weight bale, making sure the branding's correct, and all the health and safety stuff that goes on in and around under the watchful eye of these two judges beside me here. 